Hi everybody, it's Luke at Young Writers here and I am here today with Mrs. Catherine Woodfine. So how are you doing? Yeah, I'm not bad at all, thank you. How are you? Yeah, good, good. Um, so let's get straight into it. For people that don't necessarily know who you are or, or mega fans, I always like to ask this question just so it's in, in your words, but could you uh, allow us to step into your world? Who is, who is Catherine and what, what is it that you do? <laughs> So I am the author of quite a few different books for young readers. Um, but probably the ones that I'm best known for are my Sinclair's Mysteries and Taylor and Rose Secret Agents books, which are all historical adventures, mysteries, um, set at the beginning of the 20th century. So in the Edwardian area, the sort of period just before the First World War. And yeah, they're just stories that are full of adventure and mystery. They've got young detectives, they've got friendship. Um, they've got lots of historical details, if that's the sort of thing that you're interested in. And yeah, hopefully they're just a lot of fun. <laughs> um, so I actually have a question on that. So as you said, uh, most of your books or all of your books are based on or in like a historical time, era, period uh, themed. Why, why, firstly, why did you pick uh, the era that you have written about, which is generally, as you say, like 1910s? Uh, before the war kind of area and where was the was the idea of, of like the historical fiction from? Sure so I've always really loved reading uh, historical fiction I don't know there's just something about the way that those books kind of take you away to like a time and place that feels very different mm -hmm. I guess it's almost like the same reason that lots of people enjoy reading fantasy um, mm -hmm. it's because it sort of feels like it's like really sweeps you away from your everyday life and into this really different world that you kind of like explore and learn about um, so yeah, I love reading historical fiction, so I thought it would be really fun to um, have a go at writing it. Uh, and I'm a bit of a nerd about like the historical details as well, like I love finding out about all of that stuff. And especially all the sort of like everyday details, like things like what people wore and like what they ate and all of those like day-to-day -day little things that I think can really bring a historical book to life. Like that's the sort of thing that I like to find out about. Um, but in terms of the sort of Edwardian setting of the books, um, I was sort of drawn to that really because I realised that when I was growing up, I really liked reading a lot of those like classic children's books, you know, things like um, The Railway Children by E. Nesbitt or The Secret Garden by Francis Hodgson Burnett. Um, and I realised that lots and lots of those books were all set in this actually this quite like small little window of time that sort of after the Victorian era, before World War One, and like we all kind of remember what that kind of story world is like you know everybody's got a petticoat on and they're having like buns for tea and like it's a really um it's kind of really vivid in our imagination from the children's books that we all read you know things like Peter Pan, uh, Wind in the Willows are all set in that time and um, so I thought it would be really fun to write a children's book set then partly because of that but also because I was sort of surprised that although lots of contemporary children's writers were writing books set in the Victorian era or set during the war, not many of them were writing about that little bit of time. Mm -hmm. And so I just thought, hmm, it would be really fun to see a new children's mystery story set in this Edwardian period that we kind of feel like we all know a little bit and we kind of enjoy exploring. I mean, everyone has their niche. And I think one of the things that we always say is to... Do, do what you love, of course, but also write what you love and, and what you know. And I think everyone has their, you know, if you love writing, you generally uh, will have like another passion that, that kind of comes into that, whether you like writing, as you say, like sci-fi, or if you like writing uh, diaries or reflective things or, or whatever that may be, you know, it could be about the war, as you say, it could be anything. So um, it's always good to bring that. And, and if it's about what you love and it's about what you know and what you enjoy, then it's always gonna come hand in hand with your, your skill in, in writing. But, yeah, um, to... I couldn't agree more about that. And I think your enthusiasm really comes over in writing. Mm. So if you're passionate about whatever it is you're writing about, you're excited and in inspired by it, then, you know, that comes over on the page and the kind of reader Absolutely. feels your enthusiasm. So, yeah, it's it's such a good place to start. I mean, it comes from love, really, even, even you know, writing itself and, and the passion and the joy comes from what you love doing. And so putting those together will just make it even better. Yeah. <laughs> um, but to to kind of go back to the start of your journey, um, you know, your, your journey has been very English based, which weirdly, what everyone may not know or may know, I don't know, um, is from what I've seen and experienced, actually a bit more unusual for a writer. I've always found that um, writers, authors, you know, like Cressida Cowers, 
had kind of had a journey where either they, when they was younger, they they never thought they would write, they never really read that many books, um, or just went down a different different road. And whereas you know you said that your first job uh, was in is in a, was in a bookstore, and then you went on to study English at university, and then you went on to write a book. And um, weirdly, that is unusual. It's good, and and you know, but um, you don't often find that. And that's why you know we always try and say it's it's never about what you say you never know where you're going to end up it's just about doing what you love but also you did that from a young age which is fantastic so do you want to maybe tell us a little bit more about that end of things sure yeah of course no and I think you're so right like and that's something that I always try to say when I go into schools and a question that I'll often get asked is you know did you always know you wanted to be a writer you know have you always loved books and reading and actually for me the answer is yes yeah. <laughs> like I absolutely loved books when I was growing up like my favorite places were like bookshops and libraries like you know I was the sort of kid who was always getting in trouble for reading when I was meant to be doing something else like doing my homework or like going to sleep or whatever um so you know books have always been my thing and I always knew that um writing was something that I really wanted to do and I wanted to explore um but as you say that is far from the case for every writer like you know there's many writers out there who um, will go down a very different path. They might not discover their love of, of books or writing until much later. Um, so yeah, it really varies. And there certainly isn't, you know, any one single path to um, becoming a writer. So I think that's a really important point to stress. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, for me, I have always loved books and I spent a lot of time as a kid and also as a teenager, like just doing a lot of writing for fun. And um, exactly as you say, I just did what I enjoyed really. I wrote a lot of diaries. Um, I wrote a lot of stories for myself that kind of like were quite epic and would go like on and on and the characters would kind of have one sort of adventure and then they go and have a totally different sort of adventure and it would end up being a totally different thing to what it started as. Um, you know, I'd write like plays and stuff to put on at school. I worked on my school magazine. Like basically, if there was something that you could do that was to do with books and writing, I was like, <laughs> yes, me, I want to do that. <laughs> um, so yeah, and I think that is important to say as well, because if that is your thing, then yeah, 100% um, embrace it, because I think it's all of those hours of practice that I spent during that time, exploring different things, trying out different kinds of writing, you know, just following that interest, really, that is what led me ultimately to being a published author. Yeah. It's, it's nice to get both stories as well, honestly, you know, it's really nice for someone to say, um, I never thought I was going to be a writer, I never enjoyed reading when I was younger, and then, you know, it kind of hit me and I enjoyed it and I loved it and I ended up there. It shows that, um, you know, the possibilities are endless and that you don't have to have everything figured out, but also then we look at your story and it's really nice because you loved it, it's what you wanted to do, and then through the hard work it happened, and so it just reinforces the, the very much idea of you know put your mind to something and do it or don't put your mind to something and just do what you love and hopefully things will will uh, will work out in the end so it, it's good to to get both sides and, and it's a really nice story yours you know <laughs> yeah for sure and I think there are different paths as well to mm. um through different forms of creativity you know so I was always very drawn, drawn to words and books um, but I think sometimes people come to writing from different directions. So, you know, you might come to it through music, for example. Um, you know, if you're interested in music, you come to it writing lyrics and, you know, that takes you on the journey in that way. Or, you know, you might even come to it through like visual art. You know, maybe you like art, you like graphic novels, um, you like illustrated books and that's your way in. So I think, yeah, it's really important to remember it doesn't have to be all about, you know, what you're doing in English class at school or that you want to sit down and write a poem, you know, there is loads of different ways into loving writing and to loving um, books and, and texts and stories. So, um, you know, film is another great one. Um, people are interested in like film and video. Um, yeah, there's loads of routes in and it's just a really fun space to like get in there and, and explore and enjoy. You know, it's nice to know that there are lots of routes in as well. So if you are out there and, and you're watching this and you want to write, then there is a way always, I think is, is the key takeaway. But, um, you know, we, we look back at, at your earlier journey and how you got here and then we look at now as well. So, so we move to now and uh, the latest book is Nightfall in New York. There we go. Yeah. Um, which yeah. is, which is the, the fourth and final installment of the Taylor and Rose Spy series. So do you want to give us a, a bit of background information about the series? Because maybe not everyone's read the first three and we can try and wean them in. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah. So this series, Taylor and Rose Secret Agents books, is a sort of interesting one because it's actually a follow on series to a previous series I wrote called The Sinclair's Mysteries. And that is a historical mystery series 
um, about a group of friends, in particular two young girls called Sophie and Lil, who um, sort of solve various mysteries in Edwardian London, and they sort of discover this talent for detective work. And I wrote four stories about these characters sort of solving these mysteries. It's kind of Sherlock Holmes, Agatha Christie, a little bit of Famous Five in there as well. And at the end of the, the, the series, I sort of realized that even though that story was complete, I wasn't kind of quite done with these characters. And I found myself really interested in the idea of like, well, what might happen to them as they get a little bit older, as they sort of grow up a little bit, and maybe they develop this detective talent that they found um, and take it in a new direction. And, and about the same time that I was thinking this, I was doing a bit of reading about um, uh, the sort of historical background. And I discovered that something called the Secret Service Bureau um, was first established in around the time that these books are set. And that was at the time, this very small, like sort of secret government department that nobody knew about. But out of that little tiny kind of office with just a few people in it became what we know today as MI5 and MI6. So basically it was the beginning of spies, the secret service, you know, James Bond, all of that. You can kind of trace them back to this time in history. So I thought, aha, what if my characters use their detective skills and basically become awesome, globetrotting, Edwardian secret agents? Um, so that is what happens in this series. So there's three previous books and they both, basically each book follows Sophie and Lil, uh, Sophie Taylor and Lil Rose, hence Taylor and Rose, um, to different cities as they kind of go on various sort of like espionage adventures. So the first one in peril in Paris, you know, they're off to Paris, they go to St. Petersburg, they go to Venice, and this is the final book in the series, Nightfall in New York, and they go across the Atlantic Ocean to New York in 1912, mm -hmm. uh, April 1912. If you know anything about the history of important things that happen on boats in 1912. You might guess some of the sorts of things that might happen to them in this story. Um, but yeah, it's basically, it's a book for anybody who enjoys um, sort of espionage, spy kind of adventures. There's a bit of sort of like the Alex Ryder kind of James Bond type of story in there, but it's also very much a story about friendship um you know the two girls in it are you know great friends and that's really important to them in solving their mysteries there's loads of sort of real history woven in there things about what was going on in new york in 1912 um and for readers who've been following this story over eight books now i hope it's also just a really satisfying ending yeah. to the story of these characters as they mm -hmm. kind of like grow up and embark on this like new stage of their lives so yeah end of an era really <laughs> i mean they, they are cool books because they they draw from a lot of things as you say you've got the historical side of things uh, and you've got the the spying and the espionage and that links to the history of you know what you said earlier in my five and my six which is is really cool um mm. and then you've got like the wanderlust travel where, you, where they're traveling through europe in paris st petersburg venice and then you know out of europe into new york it it draws from a lot of things and i i, I would say there is something in there that everyone will possibly love to, to kind of <laughs> to, to plug it a little bit but it does draw from a lot of inspirations and kind of cover a lot of ground and, and it's you know it's fast paced it's really cool it's friendships it's good for that age as well and it's quite inspiring too and yeah it's, it's great it's a great book yeah I hope so and I think in, inspiring is a good word because I was sort of really interested in the opportunities that were kind of available for young women at this mm. time in history you know if you go back a bit to the Victorian era the expectations of young women were quite limited like what they could do their opportunities but at this time in history things are really opening up you know the suffragettes are kind of active and making the case for votes for women. Women are having opportunities to be educated. So I thought it would be a really interesting opportunity to see these kind of like young heroines kind of going out, exploring the world, um, you know, finding things out about themselves and about um, how, how the world works. And yeah, hopefully that is something that um, young readers can be inspired by too. Yeah, and it, it teaches a lesson, as you say, around that area as, and with two young girls trying to explore what it was like at the time it kind of gives you some historic historical idea to you know what children can read now to see what it was like in the past and so it's inspiring and it's important so very much worth the read um I have one final question that is somewhat of a of a deeper one uh possibly for, for those out there that do kind of want to write or or um 
chase that a little bit further, but what is one piece of advice that you would give to your younger self if you could go back in time? And that that could be career, writing related, that could, you know, it could be anything. That's a really interesting question. Um, I'm throwing a new deep end there, but. Yeah, no, I think, I think if I could say one thing to my younger self, it probably would just be to have a lot more confidence in myself and what I wanted to do. I think I did know really as a teenager, like what I wanted to do and where my passion lay. But I think that I was like, often a little bit apprehensive or unsure or would like question myself or would be like feel like that was something that wasn't for me like I grew up in the northwest in like I didn't know people who were professional writers like that wasn't really like I didn't really come into contact with people like that we didn't often have writers to visit the school or anything so it felt very out of my grasp and I think sometimes I didn't have the courage of my convictions to be like no actually this is the thing that I want to do, I should just go for it and be confident that this is something that I can do. Um, so yeah, I think that if I could give myself one piece of advice, it would just be that, like, don't worry about what anybody else is saying. Don't worry about like what's going on around you. Like, you know what you want to do, just do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, which <laughs> hopefully is something that lots of us can relate to, I think, you know, yeah, um, yeah. We, we try to go and do these things. Um, but yeah, so I think it would probably be that. And in terms of advice, but other young people who want to be writers and um, the one piece of advice that I always try to give everybody well it's kind of two pieces of advice really um one is just to read loads and loads because the more you read the more you learn about how to tell good stories I mean it's just as simple as that mm -hmm. um but the other one is and it kind of ties into what the advice I give myself but it's like don't worry too much about your writing being perfect mm -hmm. because your writing often has to be kind of a bit rubbish before it can be good so it's like you have to get the sort of bad first draft down on paper that you're just like, oh, this is terrible. What am I ever going to do with this? And just, you know, get it down, get the ideas down, and then you can like refine them and improve them and get them better. And like, mm -hmm. don't judge yourself on that first draft. Yeah. Because that's not the finished piece of writing. That's just the starting point. And then mm -hmm. you can like turn that into the finished piece of work, what you want it to be. So yeah, those are just throw in there a couple of pieces of advice for anyone watching. I mean, very true. And they're perfect. You know, I think one thing that, that resonates with, with everyone and, and especially in this day and age is that truly anything is possible and it's now so much more accessible for everyone. You know, you said when you was younger, you didn't necessarily have like writers in school and stuff. And it's really important to have that like in-person connection or story, but you know, with things like YouTube and social media and, you know, we, we can now, you know, watch things like this on YouTube and see these talks and, and have these conversations where people out there that may not have that, that opportunity can can kind of get it from somewhere else and and learn and and that's what's really important is that to to anyone it really is possible to to do whatever so you know sell out the stadium write the book uh, discover the vaccine i don't know whatever it may be but but truly yeah yeah no, absolutely and, and, and i mean i'm showing my age here but i would have absolutely loved that like we didn't yeah. have social media or youtube or anything but if we had like i would have absolutely loved that opportunity <laughs> to get on there and connect not just with seeing you know professional writers but also with other young people who were as interested in books and writing as I was so yeah it's awesome that there's all of that out there and it's just you know there to be embraced really I think mm -hmm. well uh, thank you so much for your time and uh, thank you for chatting with us I'm sure it's really useful and hopefully it kind of inspires some voices out there to get writing and and, and send someone down the right road uh, Nightfall in New York is out very very soon uh, so make sure to grab it spies espionage traveling wanderlust it's got it all history what more could you ask for um yes well thank you so much thank you thanks so much for having me of course of course well have a great day thanks bye bye